Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like my friend Mark over here from within the digital infrastructure industry. And we are coming at you live. We are live right now, uh, Mark. So watch your P's and Q's Thank you. Thanks from for the, the reminder. Data Center, the DCD Connect in the Big Apple, New York, New York. Uh, and uh, and here we go. And this is my co-host for the day, Mark Gusikoff. Mark is the Chief Certification Officer for the IDCA. Mark, welcome as always to JSA TV. And co-host for JSA and with you. As long as you're JSA here, yeah, TV. it's hard to tell us apart most days. That's right. And um, also, uh, yeah, physically, spiritually, all of it. Um, the show, how's it going for you? Oh, it's, what is it, 3,500 people? It's Something freaky, like that. right? Packed, yes. packed house yeah. in New York. Um, really cool dynamics at play now where I think, you know, three years ago, three years ago was my first time coming. Okay. And that was my introduction to the industry. It was a great event three years ago. And I remember a lot more enterprise. I remember a lot more banks. I remember a lot more finance. Now the shift is changing. You're seeing a lot more cooling, a lot more high density, AI got the nuclear guys from yes. down there. So things are starting to evolve. We're starting to see this thing play out. Dude, that's exactly what I'm seeing too. It yeah. is that, that ecosystem that we always talk about. They're here now. Yeah. It's not just the enterprise. It's not just the, the, uh, the developers. It's, it's, it's everyone from the, the cooling to the power oh. They're They're all here. And the whole uh, ecosystem, it's everyone, everyone. It's, not, yeah. it's right. And we're like this now, which I love, right? It's, it's yep. a lot more fun, uh, because there's a lot more stories to tell yep. um, now in the industry. Speaking of which, uh, you're a bit of a globe trotter recently. Oh, yeah. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about what you've got going on with regard to the travels. And then I've got, uh, two really interesting, uh, words that I want to use, uh, with you, <laughs> with you in just a moment. Ooh, uh, yeah, 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 like yeah. A fun game. It's, we're about it's to gonna, play. It's going to be fun. Like so where, where, where you been and why, why are you traveling so much? Yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff going on in North America, as we know, but uh, just came back from a little stint in London mm -hmm. and getting over there and seeing some of the positions that are that are happening there. It's it's, it's not the same dynamics it's that not. are happening in North America. Right. Um, I'm going to tell you a shocker. This was kind of the fun thing. So, you know, uh, I do a lot of work with Brian Smith, Idaho yep. National Laboratory. Yep. Um, we do this beautiful fireside chat where it's the two of us really demystifying what the nuclear position is for everyone. Uh, yeah, that's the word I was going to use. Let's do it. Okay. Demystify yeah. it. Break it down. And you, we've got to be careful because we want to make sure that everybody knows what we're talking about. We don't want to be too high level. We don't want to be too low. But we want to make sure that the message gets disseminated. So I get there. And the first thing that I'm kind of seeing is a little pushback. You know, mm -hmm. ah, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to, mm -hmm. this is going to be good. I don't think we want to. And I went back to Brian and I said, we're in trouble. Get ready for the rotten fruit to come out because yeah. we're, we're going to get some pushback of course, on this. Of course. And I got a little more, got a little more. So we do this panel and it's, it's packed house. Everybody's there. And I'm hearing a lot of things on, um, you know, a lot of cooling consideration people they're, they're, The cooling play is very big over mm -hmm. there. And then I start hearing more about the natural gas position, yes. but not like we are here. Like here, it's a very hot topic. Got front runners that are really looking for natural gas is that bridging deployment. Uh -huh. So we start to talk about nuclear and the heads are nodding. And I'm like, wow, we've really okay. got this audience. Okay. This is interesting. This isn't what I walked into right, the country right. feeling. This is something new. This is a little different. And I asked a question, quick show of hands. How many people in the audience feel that nuclear is the viable option to get us over this hump mm -hmm. to get into the next industrial mm -hmm. revolution? And about 10 hands did not go up. So most of the people raised their hand that this is a viable option. Yeah. Brian and I looked at each other like, man, thank God we're not going to get stuff thrown at us. We can put the crash helmets away. Then I thought, I got an interesting question. Something else that I'm seeing, which is a really neat dynamic. This one's going to shock you. This is that thing I told you okay. it's going to be surprising. So how many people of you believe that natural gas is that thing that will get us to the position for nuclear when we're there. And only about 10 hands went up. So we're here in North America and yeah. we're seeing natural gas as a real viable option. You got places like you know New York, right where we are, Pennsylvania, yeah. Texas, where natural gas is very plentiful. I had to start thinking about this from a different lens that most of that natural gas coming out of England came from Russia and the power got shut off to the, or, you know, the, the valve got shut off. Geopolitical so, yeah, is, is a real geopolitics. thing. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. But, um, but we've uh, got to be thinking about this. We've got to stay on top of it and not just go, well, yeah, natural gas is yeah. your option. Yeah. It may not be for everyone. We take that for granted. Just like solar here, you know, we, we've sort of laughed about that. In New York, you're not going to have solar very often. 
uh, as a good resource because you don't have it yeah. direct overhead for 12 yeah, yeah, hours yeah. a day, middle of winter in Buffalo, New York. Right. I maybe get an hour of sunlight uh -huh. a month. Mm -hmm. So in some places like you know Indonesia, when I was there, I got 12 hours of direct overhead being yeah. done. It's a great yeah. option. Texas, it's Texas. a great option. Mm -hmm. So we really need to start thinking about this kind of collaborative push and effect. We're not just seeing the whole, if we build it, they will come position yeah. with data centers. Yeah. Now we've got to start thinking about where we're going to put the data centers where the power is. Yeah. It's not always about bringing the power. Sure, we're, we keep hearing that you can't build a data center here unless you bring the power with you, mm -hmm. but we're starting to see more people strategically placing for either hydro deployments, where there's already nuclear, or where are we going to put power so that we can start building? And it becomes infinitely easier when when uh, the solution you're providing is uh, multiple resources, multiple oh, yeah. sources. When when you're not reliant on one or the other, it's a lot easier to go in and be and to do things expeditiously. But that's that bridging thing yeah. that we were talking about. So you've got, you know, if you can get that natural gas deployment, build your data center near a gas line. And I think if I remember right, I, you know, not to keep th throwing Oklahoma, but Brian Gitt actually just wrote a really good paper on that whole bridging strategy. Mm -hmm. It's also something that we're talking about, at, you know, with the work we're doing at INL and DOE, that this is something that's starting to come together, that they're recognizing that that is the bridging, the bridging piece in order to get us there. Then once you have it, you've got on-prem backup, Jen, yeah. Yeah. with natural gas. It's already there when you're ready to put nuclear into place. So okay, uh, I want to I want to uh, dig into the yeah. nuclear conversation just a bit more because um, it, it admitted I think you would probably admit uh, your 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 panel in London uh, you had an easy house to talk to about London. I grew up in a house where, in fact, I was talking to my, my mom and dad, uh, rural Indiana, by the way, um, about about uh, data centers and data center builds and and power and stuff like that. And I and I and I said nuclear, and my dad. 70-ish. So speaking of bridging, it's a messaging strategy too. Uh, my dad said, oh, you and your friends are going to destroy the planet. And my dad and, and my dad is just like, solar won't work, hydro won't work, none of this is going to work. But as soon as we try to put, as soon as we try to use clean energy, nuclear, he's thinking Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, sure. and Fukushima. How do you bridge yeah. that gap? First thing I'd tell your dad is, no, dad, you're destroying the planet. <laughs> So no, you, Dad. This is a really great question. So Brian Smith and I have been doing a lot of back and forth discussion on on what we need to be doing to get the message accurate. But it's not just about listening, talking, and understanding. Now you've actually got to get a little bit of the translation in there so that you're speaking at the same level. Yeah, we've identified that at the conversational level. There's a lot of times that people will go to the general public and start talking about the hardcore science and engineering premise That's behind right. it. It goes right over people's heads. Yeah, it right. loses them. It but scares what, them. It, well, yeah. it scares them too because now they don't know what engineering speak is. Mm -hmm. They maybe didn't take that science class to get to that level of understanding. They feel like they're being duped on some level. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you think because you know big words, you, you'll be able to do this better <laughs> That's than my me. dad. Yeah. Oh, well, but. The, the truth of the matter is when you when we start having these conversations, we can say things like, you know, when you watch the episode of The Simpsons and there's that green goo and that's what they're calling radioactive waste. Yeah. Radioactive waste is spent fuel. Yeah. It's just spent fuel yeah. rods. There is no green glowing goo. In yeah. fact, when when there is a glow, uh, it's blue. Mm -hmm. it happens underwater. You know, when when yeah. I've seen it happen at INL underwater in the tanks, but um Chernikov effect, I think is what it's called. But these are the things that we've got to start getting clarity to that mm -hmm. what you think you've seen on TV all these mm -hmm. years isn't true. So now you've got to undo a media perception, which is really hard. And you know, I love doing that, going on TV That's and right. doing all this stuff. But we've got to start speaking to people very factually, but we also have to be open to what they think. You mm -hmm. can't just shut people down and tell them, no, you're wrong, or you don't know what you're can't saying. You can't talk at them, you have to talk with them, you know? It yeah. has to be a, a two-way conversation. You yeah. really got to start, yeah. you, we really got to start understanding what they don't know, and then how can we correct this to facts? How mm -hmm. can we How can we talk about the facts, let people have their opinions, that's okay, but if you come from a place of your opinion is based on facts that are not true or yeah, invented truths, yeah. um, it's a very dangerous spot for all of us to be in because yeah. no one wants to give up Netflix. I mean, I've said this a million times. No one wants to give yeah. up their Netflix. Nobody's given yeah. up Amazon Prime. But we got a power problem. You we do. need to solve it. Right. And I'm glad you're on the front lines of that, Mark. Happy to. Yeah. Happy to be there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it, as always. Thank you very much. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you very soon.